Welcome to the Glam Reaper podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Muldowney, aka the Glam Reaper. And I'm very, very excited today to talk to the fabulous Patricia. I love everything that you do. I met you through a friend in New York City. I remember it was freezing cold. We sat with hot chocolates in, I think it was Bryant Park, a classic New York scene. And we talked all things that you do, which is all things feng shui. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that right, right? So good. (laughs) Okay. Because that's one of the things that people correct people about, they don't know how to say it. It's feng shui, it's feng shui, it's all these different things. So perhaps you'll um tell me a bit more about that. But what I um what I loved about what you do is that it's really about people at the end of the day. It's not mm-hmm. about objects, it's about people yeah. and energy and all of those things. So To be honest, this podcast, while there is a massive influence from the funeral community, you are nothing to do with the funeral community, but you deal with people who want love in their life and happiness Mm -hmm. and healing and deal with a lot of loss. So Mm -hmm. Patricia, please take it away and tell us about you. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to be on this. And I was just thinking back to that lovely day that I've done outside in New York going, oh, it'd be so nice to be there now. <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, it's interesting that you say that about our uh, feng shui not being related to, um, to really connected to death and loss. But actually, originally, feng shui was... Um, was kind of conceived to help um, people find the best placement for their grave sites and for their family's grave sites because they want to actually put their ancestors in auspicious directions, put them in the most auspicious place um, to be able to support them in their future, in their lives ahead and all their children's lives. So um, that was like one of the main ones. And it's a huge part of Chinese philosophy and Ch- Chinese um, feng shui is actually helping people like find the best plot for their grave and also auspicious grave site. And um, so it's kind of, it is linked like, um, and it, it's, it's kind of a, part of feng shui that isn't looked at very often and I don't do it it's a very 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 um small segment of feng shui experts that do do it um but uh, they do really believe in honoring their their past loved ones and they do it with so much respect that they literally go and feng shui the grave to to find the right direction for their grave for the grave for their um loved ones Wow. I mean, uh, there you go. You learn something new every day. That is incredible. We'll have to get one of those specific experts on the show for sure. Oh, no. So, um, so yeah, it's quite unique. Yeah, for sure. And so feng shui, and there you go. You've just uh, clarified exactly how to say it. How did you get into it? Okay, so I actually got into feng shui when I was in like my teens. Um, so I'm, I'm from the west of Ireland. I have no idea how I came across um, a, a, an, or had an interest in feng shui. But my family, we moved house a lot of times. So I think, I don't know whether my parents just got bored or we just get bored after a few years in one house and then see drive past new house and they're like, oh, let's buy that one. Or, you know, and their business was growing. So they were kind of expanding and changing. So we moved house a lot of times and that was probably part of it. We got to pick our own rooms and all of that. It was kind of exciting one year we're moving to this kind of like real upgraded fancy house. And interestingly enough, when we moved into that house, we were like a pretty bog standard normal family. Like things were going like fine. We had a, they did a successful business. We were in a small house and we move into a bigger house, you know, as you do when your business grows. And we moved into this bigger house. It was much more flash. It was in a really good location. It was kind of like the place to be living. And it literally like, I don't know. I don't know if you can curse on this podcast, but it was like a lot of crap. The shit hit the fan. We moved into that house. No word of a lie. It was really, really, it was a really tricky house for us to live in. Like things that had never arisen in our family before around like illness and health and well-being and like l- lawsuits like coming at us like crazy. Like stuff that was just like, what is this? Um, and it's only now that I reflect back and I'm like, oh my God, that house was just so toxic for people. It was so terrible. 
the amount of things that happened it was like we had this like curse on us for that time in that house mm-hmm. and yeah it was really crazy so at that time I asked about books for feng shui from like for Christmas so I got these books about feng shui and I feng shui my own bedroom and I even like really got into what I helped I made my parents like hire someone to help them with their business and ultimately we sold that house and moved and I swear to God, like we, we've we never had anything like that happen to us again. Like the things that happened to us in that house and unfolded never happened again for us. Like it was kind of like it all just like disappeared and we moved to this house and life just got way better again. Now weird, that house, their business went really well. So they made loads of money. And this is something that's interesting because a lot of people associate feng shui with money and with prosperity and like, and that's a big part is that it's really about creating a house that's supportive for health and wealth. So we had like a really toxic ex- experience with the health side and the wealth wasn't an issue. But there's, this is swings and roundabouts. So when we come back to like what feng shui actually means and it's translated, um, as I said, it's like ancient technique and it really is all about, um, good health and good harvest when you translate it. So good health, good harvest, good health, everyone's health and harvest when it was old, like, like ancient times, harvest came, that's where their abundance came from, how they fed themselves and nourished themselves. So it's all, it is all about health and money basically now all other aspects are included but it's about making sure that our physical environment is supporting us with what it is we want so oftentimes we are working really hard like i know that that's part of like uh you know especially um you know you i've grown up in a family like you work 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 and you do your thing you do your best and that and that's amazing um but sometimes work ethic and the harder you work isn't reaping the results that you want to see and um from a feng shui perspective your house is blocking it. Your house is stopping what it is that you want in. And you don't know this. And people don't know this. That's why I do this, because I want to make feng shui mainstream to realize that your house has the possibility to help you manifest what you want and support you. But it could also be repelling it, like holding it back. So there's different house types. um, And it's a very, very broad, deep subject but when I started in this journey myself, I kind of did it in my teens and then in my late twenties, I was like, that's it. I'm, oh, um, I ended up leaving my business, my, my family business and everything, heading to India, becoming a yoga teacher and then getting back to Dublin and saying, moving to this new city, moving into this new apartment, ready to meet someone. And I was like, I'm ready now to meet someone. So I set up my apartment for love. I remembered all that feng shui stuff, set it all up and I met my own husband who was also into feng shui. Like, I can't make this stuff up. It was all a bit mad, to be honest. So I met Ken, and then everybody started asking me, how did you meet Ken? And I'm like, why did this feng shui? And this and this and this. So that was really the start of it. And from then on, we started, because we're both interested, dived into it. So it wasn't like I woke up one morning, and was like, I'm going to be a feng shui consultant. It was really a fact that people started asking for help with it. Then we did the feng shui in our house together on the deeper level of what I teach and practice now in my powerhouse feng shui world. And I got a six figure windfall within a few weeks. (laughs) Like all of a sudden it was like, everyone's like, what just happened to your life? And I was like, well, it's called feng shui. So obviously they're like watching me, like getting a new car from like cycling around Dublin on a borrowed bike to having a new car to living in this big house in the mountains. And they're like, what the hell? Tell me how you did that. So that really just created this ripple of me then starting doing that. It wasn't kind of an intentional. I had a busy practice of my own, doing my own therapeutic, holistic practices. So I wasn't even looking for it. It found me. Um, And since then, we've now helped like thousands of women all over the world um, implement and get insane results from using their home to support them, step into the powerhouse that they are, to allow their house to support them what they want, um, as opposed to be repelling it. And it feels like a lot of people who find me or in my world, they're kind of like the penny drops. They're like, okay, so this has something, you know, I moved in or these things happened or, you know, I feel like I'm jinxed or, you know, I'm doing the work, but things are not moving as fast as I want. And when I look at their houses and I work on their plans and look at everything, I'm like, oh, the reason for that is because of this, 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 this is how you fix it. (laughs) So it's kind of fun. (laughs) It's absolutely incredible. And I remember listening to you that day in Bryan Park and being like, hmm, interesting. Things aren't exactly, you know, running smoothly for me. Let me try out and see exactly if I can implement some of these. And I remember one of the big things um, that I took away was the fake plants. So I thought I was being, you know, all pretty and beautiful in my home by having like, 
you know, the peonies and um, all of the things that I thought were good in feng shui, you know, when I kind of, okay, this, if I bring, you know, do this and this and this, but I live in a basement and so everything dies here. So I thought, okay, fake flowers, the way to go. I'll get my feng feng shui, I keep calling feng shui, feng shui. Uh, on but I'll do it in the fake way and that's a big no-no right that's like a huge absolute uh, so that was one of my biggest takeaways what are like three tips say I mean we're in the 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 COVID time right now right Patricia and it's just everyone is just feeling it it is just uh, I I mean you're just a bundle of a powerhouse I love that that's your like brand a powerhouse of energy and amazingness and I just love to know what are three things people can do? I mean, everyone's stuck at home right now. What are three things they can do that maybe if they've lost their job, maybe they're going through a divorce, maybe they've even lost a loved one because of COVID. Maybe somebody's sick right now. What are three things that we can do right now? Maybe it's throw out the fake plants. <laughs> so the fake plants thing, people are like, what? Oh, my expensive flowers. Ah. Don't panic. Like, and actually, when it comes to feng shui, like, I am not the feng shui police. So I'm not going to be like, if you don't, what? if you don't want to get rid of them, I'm not going to tell, like, I'm not coming to your house knocking, telling you to get rid of them. But I, this really comes back to feng shui is acupuncture for your home. Okay. So this is when we talk about acupuncture and we talk about just that whole energy, like it is from the five, uh, the five element theory and traditional Chinese medicine. And that is all about chi moving. Okay, it's all about movement and flow. So this is where a lot of the the, the 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 idea of say for example the fake plants. The reason I don't I don't recommend them and I don't like them is that that fake plant just sits there. It collects dust. It just like it kind of looks kind of pretty, but then they go about faded and weird, and then they start like get the collect dust. So they're collecting dust. They're also the chi and energy is getting stagnant around them. So there's no sense of movement or life. So I would prefer you to just get yourself a nice bunch of flowers once a week that you're like, oh, this is lovely and it's alive and it's vibrant and it's uplifting as opposed to here's something dead that's nothing's moving and it's kind of gone, you know? So that's one of the things, the whole philosophy behind um, feng shui is that we bring our homes into a state of balance and harmony. So when we're bringing our homes into a place of balance and harmony, it is this... Um, and flow. So um, it also is connected to the philosophy of Taoism. And the Tao is all about like going with the flow of life. And if we have things in our homes that are like blocking that flow, so you might be like, oh my God, the furniture. The furniture isn't going to do that. But if it's not like, if there's no space for it to move, it's going to block it. So the very first thing, again, we talk about the, the plants, you can do that. And, you know, it may take time for you to really, some of them, you might be like, okay, I'll get rid of that one. And just see how it feels. Like, how does it feel to bring some fresh life into your house? And the second thing that I would say to that is then we we're just talking about this energy of flow around your house. So when you look at your house and you wander around and maybe have a look and you're like, where are, th- are there places in my house where there's been something for six months that hasn't moved? or 12 months that hasn't moved, that is just there, like, you know, stagnating the chi and the energy. So if there are, and I know there are in every house, and this is something that we can really go, and you know, uh, feng shui is not about like minimalism or decluttering everything. You don't have to fold your knickers into square, funny squares. Like I don't do that. I am not a minimalist, but I'll tell you this, the things that are in my house are stuff that are being used. Um, I'm also not a naturally tidy person. This isn't about having the most immaculately clean, spotless house. It's always good. That is very, it's good to have it like clean. It's hygienic. It's important. But in terms of like the clothes that you wore yesterday that are on the chair, like that's not clutter. And you, your children's toys thrown around that, the, like they're playing with them. If they're using them, it's fine. It's a different thing if you have 10 cupboards full of children's toys that, that and your children are now 32, which I've had clients have. And you're like, okay. That stuff's got to go. Imagine how stagnant that energy is. So it's like just about relativity of like six months, a year, all of those spaces, it needs to clear. Like, so you, And it's not about getting rid of it. It's like looking at like, do I need this? Does it actually help me um, align with where I want to go in my life? You know, just even ask that question will help you kind of go, oh, so interestingly, this week, um, I had one client who was in our, she's in our Facebook community and she posted, she's like, I can't believe this. So she kept getting like job offers for this job role that she used to do years ago. 
And as she was going through the process of been telling them, like, go back and check and see, she found all these training manuals beside her in her desk from that old job, that old role. And she's like, how can I keep it? I don't want that job. And then she, well, she has all the training manuals beside her. So she's like, oh, actually, if I let go of those, I'm making space for what I actually really want to be doing. So it's this opportunity of not necessarily, I have to, it's like letting go of important things. It's not about letting go of like really important things. It's like letting go of things that no longer serve you and no longer align to where you want to go and what you want to call in. So that's like my second thing is just to go around your house and just look and see, is there stuff that's being there a long time? And just bite size, like start with like one little cupboard, like don't go, oh my God, the whole house. You know, one client today was asking me like, I have a whole junk room. I was like, don't go near it. Go find like the, the Tupperware drawer. There's nothing emotional. Go clear that, start there. Build the muscle and feel good, how good it feels to let go of something um, is really important. The next thing I would say, and this is something I, I just love and um, people genuinely feel a shift from this, is just starting at your front door. Like I remember doing this with them um, years ago, going to like a feng shui teacher and um, saying, you know, she said, clean your front door. And I went out the next day and I was like scrubbing my front door. And I'll never forget like just cleaning it and being like, I'm letting go and clearing away all the negative stuff. Like I want to just come in home and feel like, I feel happy. So what are the things that are going to make me feel happy when I get to my front door? Well, I was like, first of all, it being clean is going to be a good idea. The second thing is like, have a nice welcome mat, like make it feel cheery. Like, you know, when you get home, you want to feel good walking in that door. And the next thing is that friction point. So the front door, is it easy to open? I had a client who was trying to sell her house. She couldn't, you couldn't get in her front gate because it was like stuck. And then there was a, then there was like a, a hose pipe. As you walked in, you trip up over. No viewings had come to the house. Ha, believe it or not, they couldn't get in the gate. They would have tripped over the hose pipe and the front door had a, the fly screen had a big gash in it. I was like, fix those three things. And of course she sold it because they were able to get in. You know, it's like, do you really want to sell this house? Like, so it's like making it at the entry really easy to get in and welcoming. Again, that if there's like a friction, like a, a friction at the front door, it means it's hard for the energy to get in. And energy feels like sometimes one of these intangible things that you can't touch. Um, but actually it's money. It's jobs, it's opportunities, like it's all the things, it's life coming in and either you want it to come in easily and smoothly or not. And if it's like rubbing and hard, it won't be easy. It'll make it harder. So just like those subtle things, your house is talking back to you all the time. So as you move around your home, just to look at, at those friction points. Um, I was just laugh at my sister. I had this conversation with her recently. She's like, oh my God, I got the glass washer fixed. Now she has a quite an extravagant house. She has her own glass washer. But... <laughs> but it was like jam it was used to be jammed in the corner you couldn't possibly you couldn't properly open up the fridge because like it was jammed and it was like drive you crazy and I got it the minute she said she got it fixed like it took her a whole this whole COVID the bonus of it he was at home it took her a whole day to fix it but she was like it's now sorted and imagine like they're three years in that house three years every time she went to try and get the fridge she had this uh, like that is going to, first of all, annoy you, but also your own energy and what that area represents. So kind of pick out those little places that bug you because they're not just bugging you, they're actually implement. They're all also affecting the energy of your house and you. Absolutely. And it's it's incredible as you're talking, Patricia, I'm making a list of things I need to do because I... I've said, I've, I, and again, I feel like every time I tune into you on Instagram or I tune into you on Facebook or, you know, you show up on my feed, yeah. I think I must do that. I have to do that. And of course, classic, we put it to, on a list and sometimes it gets done, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the doors, I I definitely laid out my home, you know, in, in the, what's it called? The bag, bag, bag wall? Wall, yeah. We're going to leave all the links to Patricia's website, your Instagram, your Facebook, all of these things um, underneath the podcast here, uh, um, both on the YouTube, the visual and the audio version. Um, and so people can, you can, you've you've written a book, an amazing book that I have read, Happy Home. Isn't it called Happy Home? Yes, yeah. that's all right. And yeah, I loved that. And I loved the floor pa plan, which is called a bagua. Bagua, yeah, that's all right. Bagua. 
Um, and I've become obsessed with that. So even any time I do a clear out in my home, as you were telling us, I'm so um, anal about trying to make sure that I, I stick with that. Now, wonderfully, my money area is in my toilet, is in the bathroom. <laughs> which is classic. That just makes all the sense in the world. But even just small things you were saying just there about the door, I... And again, I feel like feng shui is something you constantly have to come back to. And as you said, it doesn't have to be do one clear out and you're done for life. No. About consistent. Because, for example, just talking to you today, I got this beautiful wreath and the flowers uh, died. So, you know, it was it were they were dying and I decided to preserve them and make like a Christmas wreath and have spray painted a gold and black. And just as we're talking, I'm like, but that's dead flowers literally hanging on my door and they're falling like they crumble every time I open the door. And I'm going, oh, my God, <laughs> like the worst. <laughs> and I think you know the thing is I suppose with all of that is like first of all like the Bagua if people are listening the school of feng shui that I teach is classical flying stars so um there's some schools that start at the front door and they do that that's not the school that I practice that's kind of like fast food feng shui um and what we teach is very much um about every house has its own unique energy blueprint and its own very specific um yeah its own specific way like the energy and um, is unique to it in terms of like it has its own date of birth and its own um yeah like so it's, it's, it has its own kind of energy frequency so wait now is it did i is the f- floor plan um is that not in your book it is but that's the oh, that's, the, that's the um the flying star version and okay. um, so there's okay. others that are there's a western school so people will be like oh they google this thing and you know i have sometimes do like free events or free time and people are like oh this is what i have and i'm like don't use that like unless you really want to use it but i've had so many examples of clients who have come back come to me and they're like this is what i've been doing for 10 years and i'm like well no one even had no success <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it just goes to show because actually when you do go on to Google, there's so many answers and, and experts out there. And what I love about you and your group, though, and I love watching it, and, and is you actually speak back to people. Like if you, they ask you a question, um, you know, should I have a fake plant at my door, for example? And Patricia will respond and say, absolutely not, yes. or whatever it might be. Yeah, but which is amazing and which is, there's so many quote unquote experts out there that don't and they're, they've become such hot shots and um, which is amazing for them. But at the same time, you lose that sense of community. And mm-hmm. I think what you have, especially on your Facebook group is incredible. And you do regular um, group sessions and courses and things like that. So it is yeah. amazing. Um, just in terms of the tips that you were giving there, um, is there, what's your thoughts on sort of, I'll call it an altar of remembrance or some, or some form of, um, area where a family or a spouse or a mother or father, whatever, um, who may have lost somebody, um, how do they let go? Like, so say if we're talking maybe a mother, a parent who has lost a child, I mean, it's, it's, it's unfathomable to even have to go into the room. And as we know, so many parents don't, and it becomes a shrine, you know, that room becomes sealed off from the rest of the home. Um, Have you any experience like talking to families through that, even if it's immediate or maybe it's down the road? I can't So um, with something like that and in general with that is like it's very much like baby steps, um, but it's also just like seeding, like, you know, the, that things need to be changed. So it's like a leaving a time frame, but also kind of helping them to create like deadlines of like, right, um, after this, we're going to, you know, all the clothes are going to be put away and not touched for a year. Or the, the room, the bed has to be taken out and be changed back into the living room. We need to do a space clearing. So different things like that would be just, it's like, it's like baby steps is what I would say with that. And, you know, for me, it's not, you know, when I talk about like letting go of things, um, especially with past loved ones, it can be very difficult and emotive. And especially for someone who's not used of like letting go of things in general, like, and I think this is actually part of it. You know, I start with like, I jokingly start with the Tupperware drawer, but that's because like letting go is an emotional thing. But when we let go on the physical as well, 
like that that helps us let go of the internal so when you start letting go of other things so i would say to someone in that situation is let's declutter everything else except that for now let's you know people come to me and they're like oh i can't do my family photo 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 photos and i'm like don't touch them yet like go and do the things that are easier that are and, and start thinking about like well i want the energy to flow and of course like creating a space that's like of remembrance but also um, a big part of, you know, my thing is like creating a vision for your future and a home that's like aligned with your future and not just a shrine to your past and your past loved ones. So it's like finding that balance is really important, but it's not like, I'm not like a big, like cut, everything now is gone. It's like not like that at all. So it's like phasing it is what I would say. Um, and then also just from the perspective of the person who has passed away, like, just think from their perspective of like, would they want you to keep all of this? Like, would they want you to be holding on to all of these things? Especially, for example, like clothes and things like that, where, you know, someone, they, they could be lovely suits in a wardrobe, like a, someone's lost their husband, lovely suits in a wardrobe. Someone could do them in a charity shop to go for an interview for a job. Or, you know, different. If, you think, if we actually just change the energy of that and then find the things that you definitely want to keep, um, and then it, like, it, it's a journey. And that's the thing. You'll keep finding things. Like we had a big thing around decluttering books in our house because I just love books so much. I've been a bookworm since I was a teenager. I just love books. Um, but now I just have a few little piles like around the place. And honestly, the other day I was back in the... <laughs> going through more books again I was like you need to do another clear of these a few more of accumulation because I brought some into bought some with me from being abroad and I was like okay I need to get rid of a few and I found this one like barbecues barbecue recipes I was like am I ever going to use this and it was the last time I said to Ken hey what about this book he's like oh no I want it and I was like you have not opened it since I put it here it is gone and you know it's like so you have to give yourself like it's just a layer and um, really see it like layers of an onion so what is the one thing that you're like isn't going to be that emotional to let go of I don't know if it was your spouse like what whatever thing that they just had that it wasn't important to them and then you can like w um narrow it down and go through yeah. the journey peeling the layers of the onion off that's amazing advice and like it really is it's baby steps and it's about knowing what's right feels right for you in the moment because yeah. that's really all that you're encouraging is it's 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 what feels right now yeah. just a quick question because uh, we're coming to the end and I don't want to hold you on too okay. too long here but um what is your thoughts on because you've kind of touched on it but I just would love to know what's your thoughts on Marie Kondo and her sort of vibe of what she does is is it something you because it sounds similar like if yeah. you know the barbecue book if it doesn't bring you and Ken joy um you know get rid so is that something that you feel she's a little feng shui inspired tiny bit or so is it so I think that one of the big things is like she's an organizational queen and she's also all about decluttering and she's very great with space stuff. And I absolutely love what she has done for people. She's really brought that awareness of people back into their homes and to thinking about what they actually have. Um, and with feng shui, I'm kind of the next level. Like I'm the energy worker of that. So if I watch her TV show, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I love what she's doing with them. But there's some places that the clutter will keep building up because it's bad feng shui or they won't be able to get into that space of like the energy still isn't going to be balanced and aligned. And, you know, what we do as feng shui consultants is make sure that the home is fully in harmony and balance energetically. Um, and that's not about that. That's not about the clutter in a house. So it's like, you know, they, they work in tandem. But what I find is that my clients, when we work with them um, and we give them the energy balances, so just like the acupuncturist, I give them the specific needles for every part of their home to balance it. The clutter goes because the energy doesn't want it there anymore. It's like when there's like a lot of clutter or anything like that, it's just like the vibration is really heavy. It doesn't want it. It'll attract that kind of lower energy. Whereas when we put the the, the um, remedies and the special cures in for each house, that makes it easier for people to let, get, let go. And we're bringing them into this sense of balance. So yeah, it's amazing what she's done. But sometimes I'm like seeing on the show and I'm like, oh my God, we can do this. And what about this? And what about this? And that's not going to fundamentally change this. But people feel good because like clutter and things like that can be weighing them down. But it may not just be, that may not be the cause of what's been happening in their lives. 
Patricia, incredible, absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And lastly, I'm going to ask you to share with us one piece of wise wisdom for people um, to let go of, not necessarily let go of 2020, because to me, I feel like, you know, there are people out there who are saying, oh, thank God that year is gone. And, you know, here, to me, worse can always happen. Better can always happen. We don't know what the future holds. Back in 2019, we didn't know 2020 was going to be the cracker yeah. of a year it was. So for people out there that, um, you know, it's the new year, they're feeling a little stuck. How would you suggest, what's one thing that you maybe haven't already said um, that would give them just a fresh perspective and open them up to the year ahead? So I think that this is an amazing question. And what I would say to you is, first of all, like it's an awareness that um, what we've learned in um, 2020 is that there's only a few things that we can actually control. One is our mindset. The second is our own physical environment and um, and our own and our own personal actions. Everything else can go on outside and we've no control of it. It is crazy. And I hope that just even listening to this show, that it's given you an awareness that your home, your environment is within your span of control. And it's starting to really focus on your span of control, looking after your thoughts, looking after your health and looking after your physical environment. And those three things will make a huge difference. So, you know, Everything that I said today, I would do all of those things and just be really mindful and aware that you have got some things that you're able to manage and control and actually improve your life using them. So like you can improve, like, and for me, I'm this whole synergy of like using all the tools at our hands. So like whatever, it's like energy working, mindset, any like affirmations, intention setting, all of that, releasing trauma and all of that stuff, releasing anything that no no longer serves us in our home and just recognizing that there's no point focusing on what's going on in the telly or on the TV. It's a waste of time. It is literally a waste of our energy where we can focus on our span of control, which is our home, our physical environment and our own mindset. And we do that. That's when, and that's what's really kept a lot of my clients and myself on track this year because we've had amazing year. Like it's been crazy, but it's been amazing because we stay and create our own bubbles for ourselves. Absolutely incredible and an incredible way to finish. Thank you so much, Patricia. You're an inspiration as always. And I hope everybody checks out your website and yeah. you are available for um, Zoom um, yeah. consultations as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. we have um, an online program called Powerhouse. So I work with people in a group format um, working with functioning their homes, but it's a, a personalized, it's quite a hybrid program. And then I work with people one to one and it's always been virtual believe it or not so yeah. when everyone was just like oh everyone's going online I've been, been doing it for five years <laughs> how do I live in Bali in Greece and New York <laughs> doing this it's that I, <laughs> going I don't know tool. I don't know Patricia but I do know for a fact there are going to be so many people listening to this they're like I want what she has I want to live in Bali <laughs> Greece and New York and whatever so I so much once again and please everybody check out Patricia's information and yeah ask her any questions she's uh, the loveliest friendliest person and she will be open to helping you out and helping you feng shui your home, your home. <laughs>